In this video, we're going to be looking at a health system for the player. Now, there's lots of different health systems you can use. I'm going to use a very simple hearts one, but you can see how you can start to apply this to multiple scenarios. So, first thing I've got on my event sheet is if the player is ever destroyed, restart the level. This is a really, really quick and easy way that you can do to make it so when the player dies, if they fall out of the world or whatever happens, the level restarts. So I'm going to change this slightly and what I'm going to do instead is put a delay on of three seconds before this happens. This just allows the player to have a bit of extra warning about what's happened before they just get the level reset. So now if I was to die off the level, so I can die by walking out the level, three seconds, one, two, three, and then the game's restarted. So it just gives us a little bit of feedback of okay i've done this and then i can do anything and then i've died we want to apply this to our enemy we made in a previous video so when we get shot we lose lives and eventually we die so how do we do that so first thing that we need to do is if we're ever shot by a bullet we want that bullet to be destroyed so we're going to add an action and we're going to add an event sorry we're going to add an event i'm going to say if player is overlapping another object and bullet. So we want a couple of things to happen. So first thing, like I've said already, is we want the bullet to be destroyed. This just adds that little bit of extra realism. If a bullet hits someone, it's going to be destroyed. So destroy. So if we look at this now, we get shot, the bullet disappears as we get shot. Now we want something to happen to our player at the same time. So we can actually use a behavior for this. So edit behavior. And there's this great behavior called flash. So we're going to add the flash behavior and add. So we can edit these settings for flash. Um, oh, we must have to edit them actually in the code. That must have changed. So we're going to add an action. I'm going to say player dot flash. And here we go. So flashing is where the player comes on and off the screen really, really quickly. So we've got how long for it starts. It ends and the duration. So if we look at this now, every 0.1 seconds, I'll flash for a whole second and then it will stop. So this happens every time I'm hit by a bullet. So we get this little flashing effect and this just shows us that we've been hit. It gives that player a little bit of feedback. Now, currently this is happening a lot. So what I want to do is I want to tone this down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a new event. And what I'm going to say is, I'm actually going to add this to this condition here. Sorry, so I'm going to add a condition and I'm going to say that this can only happen if the player is not flashing. What this means is if we get hit and our player starts flashing and then we get hit again, it doesn't actually count. So we get that little bit of invincibility every time we get hit. So now when I'm hit, I flash. And then the second bullet doesn't affect me quite the same. You'll see that it's still going through a little bit because the flash isn't lasting that long. But if I was to scale this up to about three seconds, then you'll see the bullet should start phasing through me because I'm currently invincible. There we go. So I'm invincible for a couple of frames after. Just gives my player that little bit of extra chance to survive in a very busy situation. So we've got that set up now. What we want to do now is add a life meter so the player dies after a certain amount of time. So to do this, we're going to right click, add, we're going to add a global variable, and this is going to be called life. So this is going to set to a number, and I'm just going to move this right to the top. I like to have my variables at the top, so I'm going to move this just to the top there. So life, I'm going to set it to three, but obviously depending on the type of game, this could be set to 100, and then different attacks do different damage. I'm going to set mine to 3 and any damage reduces my life by 1. So what I can say is every time that we're hit, then we're going to subtract 1 from our life. So if we subtract from life by 1. And then we can say system. And we can do a check. So compare variable. So if life is equal to 0, it means we took too much damage. Then we can do player dot destroy. So we can kill the player. And we know from our function we created earlier, if the player is destroyed, we wait three seconds, we restart the level. So now we can test this. 
So I should be able to take three hits now. One, wait for it to stop flashing. Two, wait for it to stop flashing. Three, we're destroyed. Then the game will reset. We're back to the beginning. Oh dear, our player's not come back, so it's not quite restarted the layout properly. I think that's just a bug. What I want to do now is also add in a life meter. So there's a couple of ways to do this, but actually one of the easiest ways to do this is using something called a tile background. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layout, add it to the top. I'm going to call this HUD. And with our HUD, we're going to set the parallax to be 0 times 0. Now what this means is this layer will not scale with the rest of the level anymore, which means that this HUD will always, anything on the HUD will always stay in this box here and it will follow the player around no matter where they are on the level so as they move with the level the HUD moves with them at all times what I recommend is when you're not using the HUD is lock it and then click out the way because you don't want to add objects to the HUD because it causes a lot of issues but we do want to add an object to the HUD to begin with so we're going to insert a new object I'm going to scroll down and we're going to use a tile background we're going to call this life we're going to click and first thing I want to do is I want to scale this right down to 50 by 50. Just so it's a bit more of a reasonable size. I'm going to zoom in. Oh. You'll find sometimes when resizing, Construct has a bit of a bug that it freezes for a second. Hit in, space and enter will cause it to eventually fix itself so you can carry on. There we go. So once we've got that down to a reasonable size, what I want to do is I want to design some sort of health bar, or in this case, I'm going to design hearts. But you can just fill this in with red and create a health bar. You'll see how this would work once we apply it to our scenario. So I'm going to draw a very, very quick heart. And I apologize for this awful drawing. Let me make this a little bit smaller. Ah, it didn't turn out too bad at all. So I'm going to use that, and I've got my heart now, and I'm going to exit out. And you'll see here's my heart is in the top corner. So I'm going to scale it so I've got three, which is my starting heart. I'm just going to put them at the start there. And because of the parallax layer, if I show you what happens when we play it, my hearts are always going to stay on the screen. So currently if I get hit, nothing's going to happen with these hearts. They're just going to stay there. So in order to make that change, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to where we get hit. And we're going to say add action and we're going to say life. Scroll down so we get this set width. And width is going to be 50 because 50 was how big I made the hearts to begin with. Times by life. So how many lives I've got times by 50. And because it's a tile background, it means we'll just get a different heart each time. So if we test this now. When we get shot, we lose a heart, we get shot again, another heart's going to be lost. And then finally we die, and in three seconds, the level restarts. Now, the final thing that we can do, just to make our game work that little bit more smoothly, is we're just going to add a new event. System. And we're going to go down to on start of layout and we're going to say that life set width to 50 times life this means whatever that variable is at the start it will always have that number of hearts now the reason my play is not coming back I've just realized we've not reset our life so our life is always at zero now so we can add a new option and we can just scroll down to reset global variables or you can manually set it as well if you just want to reset that single variable. So we're going to reset that back to its default. And this means now with this bit of code in here, we can scale our life to be whatever we want it to be. So we can easily set this to be 10 lives. And if we hit play, we'll now have 10 hearts at the top of the screen. And eventually when those goes, our player will die. It will reset those global variables. In fact, let's just do a really quick test of that. So let's put our life down to 2. And then we'll respawn. Let 
And then after three seconds, we come back. And because our global variable's been reset, our player's now back where it belongs.